The purpose of this mini lecture is just to go through some problems that involve calculations uh, with the mole and the molar mass and, and uh, the volume of a gas at SDP and the number of particles, all those mole highway type problems that we have. And so I'll be posting some questions and you, if you are comfortable with the topic, you can try to answer them uh, the best you can. And if you get stuck, you can just kind of um, resume the video and kind of kind of follow along. So in this first question, we have 7.17 moles of carbon dioxide and we want to know what volume it will occupy at STP. So we look at our mole roadmap here. And we always want to start with analyzing where we are, where we want to go, and how we're going to get there. So we look and say we've got a number with moles. So we're starting right here in the center. The question is asking us what volume at STP. So we want to go right up there at the top. We just have one step to do on this one, just one dimensional analysis conversion factor that we're going to have to worry about. And please note what we won't be worrying about. We won't be worrying about the molar mass, so we don't have to calculate a molar mass for carbon dioxide. We also are not really interested in this question at all about how many individual molecules we have, so we won't be using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The only relationship we'll be using is that one mole of a gas at STP occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. So knowing this, we can set up our dimensional analysis. We are starting with 7.17 moles of carbon dioxide. We want to know how many liters. And we know that this is only going to take one step, so I'm just going to put space for one dimensional analysis conversion factor. We need to get rid of units of moles because we only want liters in our answer, so we'll put our moles on the bottom. And we'll put our liters on top since we know the relationship between moles and liters. The moles number one, it gets the one. The liters get the 22.4 because that's our conversion factor. We check, yep, our moles cancel. And now we can calculate our final answer. The next question, how many helium atoms are there in 0.814 liters of helium at STP? If you want, you can, uh, what we'll do is we'll bring up our mole roadmap here. And it might be a good idea for you to pause the video right now and use this mole highway roadmap to uh, calculate an answer. Now we'll check our answer and we'll just work through the process quickly here. We know that we're starting with information about the volume because liters are a unit of volume. So we know we're starting up here at the volume of a gas at STP. This time the question is asking about individual atoms, individual helium atoms. So those are particles. In this so in this case, we really do care about how many individual particles we have. Since there is no direct connection between the volume of a gas at STP and the number of particles, the only route we can take takes us through the moles. So our first step will be to convert from liters to moles. Our second step will go from moles to individual atoms. And again, we can highlight here that uh, we really don't care about the molar mass of the helium, the atomic mass of the helium. We, we won't ne be needing that information at all. So now we've got kind of our, our route laid out for us here. We'll set up our dimensional analysis. We're starting with liters. We want atoms. We know we've got two steps. So we'll put in the space for two dimensional analysis conversions. Our first step, we need to cancel the liters. So the liters, we, we're starting out with a unit of liters on top. We're going to put that on the bottom. And we're trying to get into units of moles. The second step, we need to cancel those units of moles. We don't want moles on our final answer. So we'll put the moles on the bottom. And we're looking for the number of atoms on top. Now we can put in our numbers. The easier ones are the numbers that go with the moles. Now they're just always ones for these problems. And for our liters of gas at STP in one mole, we've got that memorized 22.4 liters. 
and the number of particles in a mole, of course, is good old 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number. Now we look and we say we've canceled out our liters, we've canceled our moles, we're left with the units of atoms, and now we can uh, use our calculators to come up with our final answer of 2.19 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. Here are two more practice problems for you to work on and this would be a good time for you to pause the video again and try these problems and then in another moment I will quickly go through um, kind of an abbreviated version of, of how to solve these problems. Okay, so our first question, how many moles of boron trifluoride are there if you have 5.72 times 10 to the 24th molecules of boron trifluoride? So we've got our roadmap and our kind of the final solution here is that we've got the number of particles, we're trying to find the number of moles, we're only going to need one step and it will involve the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Uh, this time our 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is in the denominator so please be careful when using your calculator make sure you're using your EE or EXP button properly on your calculator to make sure you get the right answer the second question was how many grams of bromine are there in 7.36 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of bromine Can we look at our mole highway roadmap and we look that we're trying to start or we are starting with a number of particles because our molecules are our number of particles and we're trying to find the number of grams we're trying to get to the mass so in this case we won't worry about the 22.4 liters per mole but we will be using 6.02 times in the 23rd and we are going to have to calculate a molar mass for the bromine for the br2 and here is the final solution all worked out and please note that I did um, write out the full word molecules I really recommend that when when the particle is molecules resist the temptation to abbreviate it because if you abbreviate it it will probably end up looking like moles and you'll just get kind of get confused and lose track of your units as you're doing your dimensional analysis